Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, today's section is you know discussing um, about creating better user experience for data focused products um, in blockchain and Web three. Um, as we all know, uh, Web three is like the um, Web three is the new web that we are in that we are transitioning into, right? The current web that we are currently in, you know, in which uh, most of us are familiar with, is Web two, right? And um, you know, before I even dive, the difference between Web two and Web three is just uh, Web two is centralized. Why Web three is, you know, the main goal for Web three is decentralization. You know, where everybody have ownership as a user, you have ownership over your data, over your assets, and you know, um, the rest of the stuff in Web three. Yes. So, um, um, to start with, um, I would start by you know telling us what Web three is about. I know most of us that joined um, actually pick interest. Like we know what Web three is about, right? Well, I would just like to you know talk a little bit about it. You know, to just um, brush our knowledge about what Web three is before we even dive into um, the user um, experience. You know, how to create user experience, how to make it better in Web three. So, um, as we uh, like I said earlier, Web three is the third generation of the internet currently being built, where websites, apps will be able to process information in a smart, human-like way. Two technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, decentralized ledger technology, and many more. And um, currently, uh, Web three is rather undefined concept that could take five to ten years. So, um, one thing we should all know about Web three is Web three is still very early. Right, it's still very early, regardless of the whole thing going on in Web3 space and the old crypto space, it's still very early. That's why you can see um, a lot of uh, issues going on. Like, um, I don't know if we all follow up, you know, about the old crypto uh, beer market and all what that may happen in the old crypto space. The recent one was the FTX issue. You know, there are a lot of issues that needs to be, you know, um, solved or needs to be put in place to make Web3 better. So it's still very early, right? But as time goes on, you know, they keep um, building it, they, uh, they keep uh, building to making the old technology, you know, better. So, um, um, in fact, we might uh, very well first see a prolonged era of Web2.5. Of web so some people actually, you know, believe uh, what we're going to do in Web3 is even 2.5, right? So, but in, in a general form, um, it's called, you know, Web3. So the role where Web3 um, was originally called Semantic Web, and the inventor is Tim Berners-Lee. Yes, so um, so this is just, you know, more information about, you know, Web3. You know, in Web3, in Web3, apps are built on blockchain. So um, as, um, like, you know, like I said earlier, Web3 is like the, it's like the um, house, you know, blockchain and the rest of it are now under Web3, right? Crypto, blockchain, um, decentralization, and so many more. So apps are built on the blockchain, um, the centralized network of numerous peer-to-peer -peer nodes, which is the same as servers or hybrid of two. The programs are known as decentralized apps, right? So, um, so talking about, you know, um, the two major aspects of Web3, because even in Web3, we have decentralized, we have centralized and also decentralized, right? And um, like I said earlier, the old FTX issue, a lot of people were saying the solution to what, uh, what happened was to make Web3 fully decentralized, where um, when you have your own, when you are on uh, your own um, government, when you have ownership to all these things, no one can, you know, um, you know, manipulate the whole market or no one can um, alter, you know, anything and your um, your assets, your money, your cryptocurrency will still be intact, right? So um, centralization, uh, examples of centralization are, you know, the Binance, the Coinbase, the Bybit and the rest of them. And centralization is just like um, there are some governing bodies, you know, in charge of the data, just the way we uh, currently um just the way things are currently in place in web 2 right if you have a fintech application you uh, before you can um own an account you need to create you need to submit your data that is your name your email address your contact details and also your kyc that is a centralized system 
but decentralized is just when um you go to any um website or any mobile app or any uh, web app and the only thing they're asking you for is to connect with a wallet with a crypto wallet that's when you know that okay this is a decentralized platform that is they are not asking you for your uh, data or your credentials they just want to connect with a decentralized wallet into their system and you can you know do trade you can do a lot of stuff on your platform yeah so um i'm also going to talk about you know the evolution of the web you know like i said um we're currently in the web 3.0 era you know when you know web started it was the pc era which was in 1980 to 1990 then we progressed to you know the desktop and eventually um around 1990 to 2000 it was the web one right um the web one um during that time um if we cannot remember um back in the days then there used to be cyber cafe where you know we go to the cafe to we we'll buy time and we try to load our i think then the popular website then was myspace and some other few ones and you know the way they load they load slowly like very very slow you know that they, um they keep on building and uh when it goes to 2000, 2010 it was the web 2 era which we are still currently using you know the social web you know uh the broadband the mobile phones you know a lot of things um you know came in during the era of web 2 and you know they, they you know the technology didn't, didn't just stop um people kept on you know building and um web 2.5 era came just after that you know like like i said um even some people still feel we are still in you know web 2.5 and also web 3. so uh, as you can see here 2010 to 2000 to 2000 upward you can see the hex there then um from that same 2010 some people feel or believe web 3 started then so web 2 and web 3 you know they are they work interchangeably if you get so the work and he had that's what you know uh, uh most people feel and uh there's a projection that in by 2020 to 2030 there's going to be web four and i don't know if we uh follow up you know the former owner of twitter uh was it earlier this year when he said he's already working on web five you know it's crazy you know there are a lot of crazy things going on uh, on the web so um as time goes on, there will there will be you know modification. There will be new technology. There will be new innovation uh, on the web, and you know maybe by that uh, maybe if you know we we live we, we live longer on Earth, we can get to experience web then. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> yeah. So um so the next thing um I would like to talk about is what is Web three in crypto, right? Um so when it comes to Web three you'll find that cryptocurrency is frequently mentioned. You know, like I said earlier, Web3 is like, you know, the web, right? There are a lot of things now going on in that Web3, from blockchain to crypto to um, NFT to um, decentralization to a lot of stuff, right? But crypto is very essential, it's very key because that is the, um, the monetary incentive, also known as token, that anyone who uses, uh, wishes to create um, govern, contribute, or pay anyone. It's like, you know, the uh, monetary incentive you can use to pay uh, for any service, you can use to buy stuff on blockchain uh, in Web3. So uh, Web3 token are data assets that are associ uh, associated, um, associated with the vision of creating a decentralized internet. These protocols may provide various services such as computation, bandwidth, storage, identification, hosting, and other online services. And, um, you know, one amazing thing about Web3 is, you know, like I said, it's still early. There's still a lot of potential in which Web3 has, like, there are a lot of stuff with, um, that can um, be done in the old Web3 space. Um, you know, looking at, um, I'm still going to get there, looking at, you know, the metaverse, uh, where you can own a land, you know, in the metaverse. And there are a lot of, you know, amazing, you know, things that back, um 10 years ago or 20 years ago you can never imagine that it's going to happen and it's already you know taking shape and happening so um uh, what is web 3 for so you know like i said one of the questions you're going to ask is okay this is web 3 that you know everyone is just talking about what is it for so um there are like six major you know um thing you know web 3 
is for, which is um, decentralized finance. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, privacy and digital infrastructure, uh, blockchain gaming, uh, decentralized autonomous organization, which we all know as uh, DAOs, um, creator economy, and the popular metaverse. And um, today, we are going to be focusing on decentralized finance because um, it has, you know, the most use case out there, right? And uh, I think, you know, focusing on this will give um, clearer uh, vision or clearer idea to um, to what we, um, this topic is about. So, um, just before I dive into, you know, the old user experience part of it, um, I would like to also talk about, you know, what decentralized finance is about. Decentralized finance exploded in um, value in mid-2020. Um, yeah, um, mid-2020, just after that lockdown, I think during that lockdown and after that lockdown, yeah, uh, offering cryptocurrency um, users the ability to invest, borrow, lend, stake crypto assets permisslessly. So permisslessly is, you know, when you have um, full ownership, um, full control, like there's no control, you can, you know, do anything with you. You are your own boss, right? So you can decide to invest, you can decide to borrow, you are your own, you know, um, um government when it comes to owning these assets um decentralized finance eliminates intermediary by allowing people merchant businesses to conduct financial transactions through emerging technology through peer-to-peer -peer financial network DeFi uses security protocol connectivity software and hardware and um, advancements why DeFi faced uh, face is fair share of security issues like hack and scam um i'm very sure if we are very conversant with you um crypto and block Chain space, we know that there are a lot of scams going on in that space, especially um, the own uh, NFT. When NFT was still uh, very huge, you know, there were a lot of noise about NFT earlier this year. There were a lot of scams. So, um, decentralized finance faces that because um, some of the users don't even know about security to start with. And, you know, the, um, their accounts, their wallets got hacked in and their money uh, got squandered. So um, the industry offers Web3 the opportunity to onboard potential billions of users that have been neglected by traditional finance firms, such as banks. Um, their five products and services will undoubt, uh, undoubtedly be used in leading Web3 protocols, looking to incentivize their users. So um, like I said, um this is like finance one of the issues that is around it just like um okay i, I wanted to make i wanted to use fts as, as an example but they are cefi which is centralized finance but um the same scam and act still affect decentralized finance right like i mentioned earlier um one of the um act or one of the yeah one of the acts that, that happen in that space is sometimes you can just receive um a pitching mail that says oh um um let's say you have a trust uh, trust wallet account and you can just receive a mail saying oh you need to change um there's a message from trust wallet that you need to do this and once you like click on that link and you mistakenly give out your 12 um secret phrase that's the end like that's the end of it uh, <clears throat> of your asset be it your nft or your cryptocurrency so um you have to take security very key and don't let greed you know uh take the large part of you yeah so so now let's take a look at creating better user experience in crypto and decentralized finance products um so now now we now want to talk about you know um creating better uh, user experience and to start with um listed here are the top five ui ux best practices for crypto app design um if you are looking to you know create a better user experience for a crypto app a blockchain app or any app in the web3 space these are like the five um top you know best practices um the first one is to analyze end user needs and competitors why the second one is provide data visualization. The third one is to make a crypto app easy to use. That's very, very key. 
Um, the fourth one is educate users and explain crypto benefits. And the last one is design for trust and security. So I'm going to um, take this um, one at a time. I'm going to start with the first one, which is to analyze end user needs and competitors. So basically what this first one is saying is, um, as a product designer, um, regardless of the fact that you are even designing for a Web3 space, uh, for a Web3 products, we all know that one of the first thing, you know, you need to do as part of your US research is to, you know, analyze your, uh, your user and your competitors, you know, it's part of your uh, OUX um, deliverables, right? Um, so, uh, but, but in Web3, it, um, it's similar, but it's just a little bit, you know, uh, we like to say different. Yeah, just a little bit different because um, there are different type of user, um, depending on the type of product that you are build, uh, that you are working on or you are building in Web3. And this first one, you know, to create your own cryptocurrency app. So this first one, we are, we are looking at a cryptocurrency app. Let's say, um, uh, let's say a Binance, but the decentralized one, right? So uh, let's say Binance. The reason why I'm using Binance is because I think we are all familiar with Binance, and we have like um, a pictorial, you know, view of what it looks like, right? So let's say Binance. So to create your own cryptocurrency app that will achieve success, you should start from analyzing competitors to identifying their strong and weak side. What's more, it is essential to reach the goals and preference of the target customers. So prior to feature prioritization, you know, um, when, be, when designing a product, you have a list of features, um, be it from the product manager or the client, oh, this is what I want, or oh, this is what I want to build for the MVP, or this is what I want you know, to build in the product. The priority, the first feature to the last, then to the second, then to the last. So before even, you know, um, prioritizing those features, you should segment the audience according to the type of trader. You know, um, the example I'm using here is like a, bin, a Binance, where you can trade, you know, cryptocurrency, you can trade assets, right? So the first um, um, trader is, uh, oh, the first uh, audience, I mean, is the scalpers. The second one is day traders. The third one is swing traders the fourth one is position traders and the last one is foundation traders so i'm just going to briefly talk about you know what a scalper is uh scalper um they are categorized as short-term traders scalper earn money by reselling stock and benefiting from small prices from from small price changes they usually hold their position open from several seconds to a few minutes let me take that again. Scalpers are categorized as short-term traders. Scalpers earn money by reselling stock, benefiting from small prices. They usually hold their position open for several seconds to a few minutes. So um, an example of scalpers are um, people that wait till uh, when um, a coin has deep a, a bit, then you know they sell to make uh to get profit off it like they don't they, they are not the greedy ones they don't really take much of your time to you know want to make that large money just small difference and they're out they are good right and we uh the second one is the day traders so day traders they aim to gain advantage of small market movements they are focused on trading without leaving open position overnight the average open time of a day position is typically less than an hour so for day traders, like uh, they also try to maximize their weeks, and uh, it's just you know uh, within you know one hour, and they are good. Um, the third one is swing traders. Um, sw uh, swing traders, um, their key objective is to capture short and medium term profits over extended period. As a rule. The average duration of an open position varies between a couple of days and several weeks. So, as we can see, uh, as we can see the you know the project, uh, progression, scalpers, you know, um, it's just within minutes. Um, day traders is less than an hour. Uh, swing traders is couple of days, 
and several weeks, position traders, they put the main emphasis on macro trend and asset growth potentials. Position traders buy assets whose value is likely to increase over the long run, so they are not too concerned about monitoring short-term price fluctuation. So position traders are, the, are those ones that are actually put in their time to do research. Like um, now, you know, now we are currently in the bear market. You know, all the cryptos are, are currently, they've currently lost their value. They, like they, they've done, you know, their plantation, they've done their analysis, they've done their research, and they know that, okay, in the next um, couple of weeks or in the next couple of months, this particular coin will increase in value. So they know, okay, um, when I buy this coin, I'm going to sell. So, so, so the, um, it's like a long term um, investment for them. And um, the last one is foundational traders. The uh, foundational traders evaluate the individual performance and characteristics of each asset to make the most realistic value esti uh, estimation. Foundation traders generally open position for the long term. So, foundational traders are also, they also do the same thing as position traders. But um, they evaluate the individual performance of any uh, of um, these assets. That is, this um, each of the cryptocurrency assets. So um, the essence of you know talking about this is you, you you have to depending on the product you are you are trying to build or you are trying to design in Web three. You need to understand your end user, right? You need to know you know, what they want, you need to know uh, what they need. And that's how you can be able to, you know, design a user-centric, you know, product uh, uh, your user will actually use, right? And yeah, and um, talking more about that. Um, so um, if you are wondering how to make a cryptocurrency app, it is important to design user stories describing various end users need. So I, I, listed, I listed out, you know, an, uh, some examples. So for example, as a day trader, you know, um, as uh, I'm very sure we are all familiar with, you know, user story, right? Um, for each of these user, you should at least, you know, list out, you know, the user story of what you think or what you assume that these users would want to do on, on, on your mobile application or on your products. And that's how you can even, you know, um, design a, a better product, right? So as a trader, I want to have access to more liquid assets, so that, yeah, such as forest, stock, features, white vim, portfolio statistics on the dashboard. Um, as a swing trader, I want to have technical anali uh, an uh, analysis to, to find and evaluate trading opportunity. As a position trader, I want to have tools for technical and foundational analysis to identify the preferred exit point for intended position, as well as have the appropriate stop loss order. I also need to have a variety of indicators to build quote charts. So now, um, if you are to build, let's say, this product, this user story will always keep you in check. We, we tell you, okay, for this user, have, have I been able to, you know, capture what this user, uh, this user story and the user go? Can this user actually do this on this product? So, you know, this is uh, one of the adva advantage of having user story. So that to always put you in check or go back to see that, okay, what this user, you know, wants to do, uh, have I been able to, you know, accommodate that in my design, right? So uh, we are going to move to the second one, which is provide data visualization. So um, in most of the crypto uh, or blockchain products, you always notice that um, most of them, have graphs or they have charts, like especially um, decentralized finance, you know, um, like Binance and all the, you always see charts um, in the product, right? Where you monitor, you know, um, how the currency is doing against, you know, um, the day, at least if it's one week ago, if it's one month ago, if it's 24 hours ago. And, you know, there are some other metrics that you can measure, uh, you can analyze or visualize the data with. So data visualization is among the main elements of a cryptocurrency trading uh, platform. However, enabling data visualization is quite challenging in the context of either crypto app design or development. So first, the changing price and indicator have to be instantly mapped on the dashboard. Second, multiple metrics 
visualize in a single chart must not overlap. You know, like I said earlier, um, in most of these cryptocurrency trading platform or apps, you always get to see, you know, apps and uh, you and you always get to see charts and um, charts and you know um, graphs, right? So you should um, always put this at the back of your mind. You know, it's part of the best practice for uh, designing most cryptocurrency application. Um, the third one is make a crypto app easy to use. For me, this is like the top, you know, the uh, it should be like the top best practice, like the most prioritized, I mean. Um, and I think, you know, as a product designer or UI UX designer, one of our responsibility is to design an app that is easy to use. You know, we are um, creating these products with, we are creating these products at, um, with, um, the mindset of making it easy to use, making the user experience, you know, better uh, to make it seamless, right? So also, you should be able to make a crypto app easy to use also. And, um, you know, um, if you look at the Web3 space, we notice that most of the apps in the Web3 space are still, you know, hard to use or they are rigid because um, the tech is early, right? And, you know, when a technology is early, the first uh, set of people that you know work on this on the technology are the developers and you know developers they don't know anything about user experience what they just do is to you know code out um to innovate um to build out you know the technology then when the technology start having use cases and adoption that's when you know we come into the space and we start you know building the product you know making it easy for users to use and all that and i think that's the main reason why a lot of crypto products out there, a lot of Web3 products out there are actively, you know, um, um, employing, you know, product designers because now there are a lot of use cases, right? And they want this to be easy to use, right? They want people to be able to download the application or um, visit their web application and, you know, transact business, you know, use their products um, better. So by creating a cryptocurrency solution, easy to use, companies attract more users and increase retention rates. Um, I don't think uh, I need to say much about this, right? We all know that, you know, when a product is easy to use, obviously there'll be an increase in retention rates and uh, there'll be, uh, the chunk rate is obviously going to reduce because, you know, user can actually carry out the uh, purpose. They can carry out the goal of, um, using the product, right? And um, for this purpose, it is crucial to develop a convenient information architecture and an intuitive user interface when creating a crypto app design. So um, um, in some of the crypto apps that we have out there, uh, one of the things or one of the you know bad user experience that some of them have is uh, the information architecture you know, um, how they structure their information is uh, is not well structured, right? And and we all know that, you know, uh, information and architecture is one of the important things you need to consider, you need to pay attention to when, you know, you are even, um, from from the ideation of the app, you know, when you're sketching, we are working on your lo-fi to your hi-fi, you know, you should be able to structure the information you want users to see from, uh, the priority to less priority, right? Um, so they, they are just to, you know, information architecture and user experience. Um, information architecture is about organizing content inside a software product in a way that people can interact with without thinking. You don't want to, you don't want to build a product where your user will not start, you know, thinking about how to use it. That is failure on arrival, right? So you want to build a product where a user would use it seamlessly without even reaching the support team right so um this way us experts have to work out a flow that would allow customers to find what they need as fast as possible like getting between screens or pages without effort uh second one is the user experience uh, the user interface obviously um one of the uh, thing we need to focus on is to make the user interface very simple 
um, to give clarity and you know, you know, simplicity and clarity. That's just it, right? And UI experts needs to make each screen serve a certain purpose. What's more, the user interface should not be overcrowded with graphical elements, that is buttons, icons, and you know, you should be able to structure, you know, your user interface in a way that it won't overwhelm the user. Um, and I think uh, one of uh, the issues, I, I wouldn't even call it issues because in most crypto apps, there are a lot of things going on. That is, if you open your Binance app now, you will notice that, you know, there are a lot of things going up and you'll be like, like as a user, like which of these, you know, thing do you want me to even focus on, right? Um, I understand that um, um, that can, I, I believe, right, that that can be, uh, that can still be improved on, right? But um, yeah, it can still be improved on, that there's nothing that can be improved on. And I think, you know, in years to come or months to come, um, there'll be more, you know, um, there'll be more ideas or more direction to how that is going to change over the time. But, you know, like I said, um, to make your app easy, the two things you just need to focus on is the information architecture and, you know, your user interface, making it clear and simple. Um, the fourth one is educate users and explain crypto benefits. So, yes, so, um, like I said earlier, uh, Web3 is still very early. Crypto is still very early. Blockchain is still very early. And how you can onboard people to Web3 or how you can make your app, you know, easy to use for user is to onboard them, uh, is to educate them, educate the user about, you know, crypto and also tell them the benefits, right? When they know the benefits, that's when they can even be motivated to, to want to um, use, you know, Web3. And I'm very sure most of us that have um, either one or two crypto assets or that are currently acting in Web3 is because in the initial um, stage, we knew the benefits, right? We, we knew the potential and we were like, okay, uh, fear of missing out, okay, I want to, get into the space, okay, I, I want to do this, and, you know, we're already in the space. So I think um, that's, you know, one of the best parties in in um, designing, you know, crypto apps or Web3 apps is to educate your user and explain, you know, crypto benefits um, to them. Um, I won't waste much time here. So the last one is design for trust and security. So um you know regardless of either it's a web 2 or web 3 you know um web right um security and trust is key you want to ensure that your user can trust you you want to ensure that the security on your platform is on thread right so why the digital currency market is going at a rapid pace a lot more users start buying digital coins and carry out crypto transaction However, as cryptocurrency apps are subject to hacker attacks and data breaches, the security must be the highest priority. So um, I know like some of you uh, will be thinking that, okay, this, um, the old trust and security um, should come from, you know, the dev angle. That is, they are the ones, you know, to actually, you know, um, tackle this. But when it comes to design, there's, there's a little thing, and there are, um, there are ways we can also use design. We can design, um, uh, we can introduce some things into our design to improve the trust and security, right? Um, you can see with, with, this, with this aim in view, that is with the trust and security in view, companies need to implement functionalities like two-factor authentication, email verification, data encryption, biometrics, and you know so on. So, um, I'll use Binance again. Um, if you notice on Binance, when you sign into your app, before you sign into your app, you either verify either your email uh, verification or your phone number, right? And uh, this is actually for a centralized um, platform, right? That's where you can use email and data. But when, when we are talking about decentralized, the only thing we use there is seed phrase. Right, seed phrase, and 
There's another thing you can um, also do to add more security is password and and pin. So that can be like um, a two-factor, you know, um, authentication for a decentralized app. Whereby, let's say, for example, after I've um, downloaded the application and let's say I already have um, I've created a wallet, right? And I have this my uh, twelve seed phrase with me stored somewhere, and I come back using the application, I input my seed phrase. Um, before I can continue, um, you can create a screen where um, they can input either their password or their PIN. So that PIN will serve as um, another level of security where, um, let's say, for example, they're using the app and they're inactive for one minute. You know, it could just bring out that screen for them to input that before they proceed. You know, um, you know these are little, little things we can use we can use design um we can design um we can use our design for when it comes to trust and security then you know uh, with that in our design the devs can now have you know a bigger picture on what uh, they can do right to make that more secured and uh final words on these are one priority design it is crucial to research end user goals to tailor the application accordingly you know, like I said, not all, there are a lot of, you know, subsectors in Web3. There are a lot of, um, you know, subsectors, there are a lot of um, um, categories of um, Web3 from decentralized, we have NFT, we have, um, we have pool, we have, there are a lot of, you know, part of Web3. So you should know your, you should research your end user goal, right, so that you can tailor it to the application you are designing. Um, secondly, by working out the convenient information architecture, a company can provide smooth navigation between screen, enabling users to find what they search for as quickly as possible. You know, um, user um, information architecture should be one of the things you prioritize, right? Uh, apart from the first one, that is, we search end user go information architecture. Um, the third one is proper visualization of crypto data. You know, like I said, you should be able to uh, visualize your crypto data in a way that uh, an organization, um, um, in a way that you know, user can uh, interpret and can analyze. You know, they can easily assess, interpret, and analyze. Um, and as we see there, an organization will increase customer satisfaction and chunk rates you know this this might you know be uh might sound little right but this little impute would increase the um, customer satisfaction retention and event churn um fourth one is the use of trust signals will raise credibility in your services the use of trust signals will raise credibility in your um, services um the fifth uh, the fifth one is educational content will help you attract non-professional traders and generate high, higher profits um so um example of educational content is like the blog section so i'm um, using binance still i don't know why i'm using binance maybe because binance is you know the biggest uh, centralized exchange and i know uh we must um some of us like all, all of us, we must, um, we've had, you know, one thing to do on Binance in one way or the other. So Binance has this, um, um, they have this part of them, which is called Binance Academy, which is dedicated to, you know, educational content. And they also have like a blog section on their website where you can even read about, you know, some things in Web3 or um, in crypto. Some things that you don't know, or you probably need more information to um, to to use um, the app better, right? So um, when you're building, you know, a product in Web three, make sure you you are putting that at the back of your mind to provide, you know, educational content um, so that users, when users come on your platform, you know, they can easily you know navigate through, they can easily you know, learn how to use certain things on your platform without you know minimizing your app and going to google to search for um information right and lastly 
by explaining the cryptocurrency advantage to user, you will eliminate the fear of the unknown. So, you know, like I said earlier, um, well, like it's just a normal thing, right? If before we do anything, if you are being told, you know, the advantage of of that particular thing, and you know that could uh, motivate you to want to, you know, um, know more about that stuff or want to give in to that stuff. So, yeah. So um, those are like the final words, you know, from from um, you know creating like a better experience for um, blockchain products. So um, I want to use a product that I design. Um, I'm actually working on a decentralized crypto app. So I want to use like um, a pictorial you know, use case on some part of, you know, um, some user flow in crypto app. So um, let's go. So the product is Starlet. Um, so before I even start, you know, showing us, you know, the pictorial use case, um, Starlet is an only one cross chain and non custodial crypto wallet built on Stacks blockchain secured by Bitcoin. So, um, cross chain, cross chain is, um, so this app is just think of trust wallets, Metamax, right? Be uh, because they are non custodial. Non custodial also means decentralized. That is, as a user, when you own uh, the wallets, you own full ownership. Like, it's not a centralized platform, right? And cross chain is, you can, um, interact on multiple chains, right? Be it um, Ethereum, be it um, Avalanche, be it Solana, be it, you know, any chain, right? And the mantra for Starlet is easy access to the world of Web3. That's the main goal, you know, to easily onboard, you know, Web2 user to Web3. And one of the um, the first, you know, stage in onboarding them is to own a wallet, right? A crypto wallet. and a non-custodial crypto wallet is what they need to start using other protocols in Web3, All right? So um, these are the user flows I'm going to focus on, which is onboarding. The second one is backup wallet. Third one is sending tokens. Fourth one is swapping tokens. And the last one is started learn, learn, which is like the educational. Um, you know, I talked about educational, you know, stuff in the previous, um, um, in the previous stuff I was talking about, so we added that here too, so that we can, you know, have that pictorial, you know, uh, use case. Um, so like um, the onboarding. So what I try to do here is, um, I don't know if, I don't know if um, some of us have created a wallet on um, MetaMax or Trust Wallet. I don't want to use Binance because Binance is a centralized wallet, right? Uh, the flow is different. Or if you have created um, a wallet on um, Trust Wallet, Trust Wallet is a non-custodian that is decentralized. So what I try to do here is um, to take out, you know, uh, the so many steps that user have to take, right? And like I said, the mantra for this product is to make onboarding easy. That is, allow user to gain access um, to into the application on. A wallet then they can then you know start doing other start exploring other part of the product so the first thing so let's assume this product is live on google play store or app store right the first thing is when it download you know we have the splash screen and the next one is you know the onboarding screen i just added i took out some you know some screens just to make it um just to reduce um the the screens right so um Okay, after this one has shown for like a few seconds, this shows and, you know, information starts displaying and all that. So um, let's go with a user that don't have a wallet. So one of the things I try to do here is I try to make sure um, I use communicational, um, I, I use more of communications, right? I, um, I'm trying to like, most of most of the things I used there was communicational, like trying to talk to the user as if I'm, I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. So um, instead of don't have a wallet, I don't have a wallet, right? When you click on, I don't have a wallet. So what happens is um, this model pops up that tells them to create the wallet using 
um, either PIN or password. So what I did was to give them options because um, uh, when I was doing my research is um, you should not try to cage users. You should try to at least give them options, right? So to either create a wallet with a PIN or password, we should know that this is a decentralized app. We're not collecting any of their data, which is their name, email address, phone number, or anything, right? So after creating this PIN, so let's say they click on, this particular user clicks on PIN, and it opens up this page. There is um, a warning here that tells them to keep your wallet safe from uh, and threats. You are required to create a PIN to put it to your wallet. So after creating these, and this successful model comes up, and they click on get started automatically it just opens up it just takes them to the home page of the application so i know um some of us are thinking that there's one thing missing here which is to back up you know their seed phrase right so what i did was instead of forcing them to back up that's uh, to back up their wallet that is to show them that 12 seed, uh, seed phrase or security phrase at the onboarding i took that out and then replace that with you know creating either a pin or password then when it gets into the application so this is where it stops you know after you download the application you click on i don't have a wallet you create your pin or password and you are in you have your wallet but it doesn't stop there right when you now get into the application you can um okay i omitted a screen here um it should show you know um just a um a modal telling you, okay, you need to secure your seed phrase, then you can either click on um, if you want to, if you want to secure it now, or you want the app to remind you later, right? So you can, so now when you're in the application, you can, you know, start exploring the app, you can start doing so many things, but before you can take certain action, like let's say you want to swap, uh, you want to send, uh, you want to receive a token, no, you can even receive, let's say you want to send you want to swap and you want to do some other actions then it will now you know force you to secure your um your your wallets right so um that's the first one um, this, um so now this is the backup wallet so now um this is the warning sign that is going to display so this is just like the dark mode version so i just uh, like interchange it so that we can uh, get to see um in both ways so this is how it's going to show when you initially you know log in. So you can either say, okay, you don't want to back up my wallet, then it reminds you, you know, later. But when you click on back up your wallet, then it takes you to this page. So this page is is showing you, you know, all the things you need to do, all the things you need to know about, you know, backing up your wallet, you know, the information, and um, you can even get to read about, you know, setting. Um, Web3 terminologies, because one of the things I also uh, paid attention to is I don't want user to minimize this app, to go to Google to start, you know, searching for this meaning, right? They can get all this information right on that application. So when click on this, you know, this model, you know, the bottom sheet comes up so that they can read it and they click on OK and they can, you know, proceed, right? Um, so this is just to show, you know, uh, when you click on seed phrase, you know, they get to read what it's about, you know, pitching attacks. Uh, when they click on start, it just takes them here. Where so this is like um this part is going to like protect the the product, right? Because you need to also in your design, you need to make sure that you are protecting the business so that um, users can't you know fault the business, um, can't fault the business if the user you know didn't do what they're supposed to do. So yeah, before they continue, they need to agree to the terms. That is, if they are going to um, store, uh, as is written here, if I expose my secret phase to anyone, my assets can be stolen. It is my responsibility to keep my secret phase secured. So all these are just to you know remind the user that this part is crucial and you must take it seriously. Then when you click on continue after you know, uh, accepting this, um, it then displays, you know, the seed phrase. Then there are more information. I think, yeah, there are more information here on how they can secure it, you know, what they should do and what they should not do, right? And, you know, 
after that they click on um finish and that's wallet is backed up so now if they let's say they change their devices and they and they download the application and they want to get into this particular wallet you just need that 16 seed phrase and they need to like create another pin and password for that particular device so um the third one is sending token so what i did here is um i also tried to use communicational um i, I tried to like communicate with the user right to uh to make it like um i see they're talking with a customer web so um for you to send on this app when you click on this um logo it opens up this bottom sheet where most of the function that is send receive swap bridge and also buy um other tokens so this is for sending right when you click on sending it takes you to the token where you have to select the token available um let's say you select stacks stacks is uh, one of the um token um when you click on stacks so um on this page it's called recipient address so now there is like a warning here to, to tell you that okay you need to make sure the wallet address that you're about to fill in here is the correct one right because when you input the wrong wallet address the money is gone you know you have to be very careful about that so that is being displayed to the user and you know like i talk about you know um, information hierarchy you have to place the uh, the information according to the um, you know uh, to the level right the one you want the user to see first um, to the list one so um um on that year you can see i said instead of just putting the um just saying network send to um stacks network so you know using more of communications right and um i just added this um users can also um change you know the wallets let's say you can have multiple wallets that's one thing about um decentralized applic uh, application you unlike centralized where you can only have one wallet to your name um to to you right in decentralized you can have hundreds of wallets there are no limits to it right the only thing is you make sure you know your secret face to this wallet right so let's say you want to you have three or two wallets you can even choose at this stage instead of going back from the beginning to change your wallet from the home page you can still change the wallet in which you want the solution to happen right here right and um after imputing you know the um the wallet address and also some other informations then um it takes you to the amount right you can see um on different app you have all the information on one page that is the wallet the amount so this is like um a progression you know is it's taking you on a journey all right so you um you are sending you type in the amount then you get to see the network fee or the other information that are there uh, for the user to to see then you click on continue then it shows you a confirmation page for you to confirm before you know continue because once you process this that's the end it has already been submitted to the blockchain and if it's a wrong address the money is gone for life right and no one is going to help you to retract it so uh one thing about uh, blockchain solution is you have to be very careful you have to make sure all the information are very very correct before you proceed so now um you know i, I talked about you know designing for trust and security so now the password or pin that you once created you also need it here to validate this transaction right so when you click on continue it, it don't like it doesn't just go that way and the reason for this is let's say um um there is no pin or password to this application and someone just have access to your um app once they get you know with let's say like i said if they don't have password and pin they can just transfer send your money out of this app and you won't even know who, you know who carried out that um that stuff so that's why we have this where you have to select um either pin or password or whichever one you um already have um created on the app then after imputing this then the transaction gets submitted on the blockchain and also you can also see it on the blockchain 
So um, the third one, uh, the fourth one is swapping coins. Um, I, okay. So um, it's still the same. So um, w w I tried to you know make it you know communication or two, you know um, from to to receive. That is from uh, which coin to which coin, right? And these are just you know uh, when you when a user clicks on this wallet icon it opens up a bottom sheet for them to choose which of the preferred wallets then when they click on this network it opens up you know a bottom sheet for them to search for the network or select from the ones that are listed and also the same as the token and this adjusts you know um when the user has um imputed um the token they want to receive and um, automatically they get to see the value um, they are receiving, right? This is the token they want to swap, and they get to see the value of the token they want to receive. And um, yeah, and also when they click on this, you know, swap button, it's inter interchange. And um, you know, um, this other, okay, let me go back. There is a transaction setting here. When you click on that, it just shows this where you can add more settings. Um, these are for, you know, um, people that are more professional, you know, that know that want to have uh, slippage tolerance or um, some other constraints to this transaction, and they click on confirm. Also, the pin or password is required for this transaction to complete. And the last one is, you know, the standard lane. So, um, the standard lane, the main goal is to help user, you know, um, carry out transaction on the application without going out outside of the app, right? without minimizing, without going to Google, because we want to make sure user experience is better. We want to make sure we are teaching user how to use, you know, Web3, how to use, uh, how to uh, carry out transaction on um, on the app without going outside the application, right? So yeah, they can get to get everything about Web3, right? And they can also get to, because, they are, because one thing about user is, yeah, you can't assume all users are the same. You can't assume all users are brainy or they know what to do. You should always factor in those users that are slow learners, right? That learn very slow. So um, there's a story-like feature here where even the as easy as the swapping or the sending flow might look, some will still find it difficult, right? So there's a story-like feature where when you click on swapping, you can get to see, you know, end-to-end of um what you need to do that is um the first page you need to click on you know um the um in live environment this would be like an a, animation that that shows them okay with an arrow where the users will click on you know it's just like our normal story uh, story um, or status view on whatsapp how you know it shows right so um so this part is, is just to educate user, to make user use the product better and yeah, and the other part of the application. So um, yeah, so that's it for me today. Um, thank you. Uh, and I hope all what I've said, um, we've been able to learn one or two things um, here from it. Thank you all so right. much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a very insightful presentation, right? And um, so sorry to cut in. Sorry to cut in. Um, I listed out some helpful or uh, some useful web three website here. Um, so you can. I will just leave this on the screen so we can, you know, write them out. Um, for all, for people that are new to web three, you can learn, you know, web three words and terminologies. Um. This is to understand Bitcoin design better. Um, we have this also. This you, you can get to get inspiration. Um, it's like um, an inspiration website where you can get to get other designs. Um, when you're stuck, you know, designing a product, you can visit that website and you get inspiration from other websites. There's also um, use web three. So this like um, okay, also DeFi Lemma and DeFi Plus. You can get to see it's like a directory, like almost all the products available in the web three space. You can get to see them here. So um, you can take a screenshot of these or write them down. And yeah, thank you. 
All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a very interesting presentation. I'm sure Mark Cook would agree with that. I've been able to learn a whole lot of stuff about Web3. Uh, but we already nine minutes past time, so we won't have so much time for questions. Right. Um, so I think we can do two questions. Right. So if you have a question, uh, we can't take more than two questions. So other questions, you know, you can direct it directly to Akoride uh, once he's able to, you know, share his uh, socials with us uh, where we can reach out to him directly. So um, Ood, I can take two questions. So um, if you have like a question, you can raise up your hand. I'll take the first two questions and then we will uh, end the session for tonight. Okay, so I'll be taking, uh, you can raise, use the hand feature, the raise hand feature, right, uh, to, you know, indicate that you want to ask a question uh, on this particular topic. And um, the next uh, 60 seconds, I will be taking um, questions. Okay, I've seen one hand, I want to put the second hand. Um, Okay, all right. So we just have two questions already. So we have Adekunde and um, Taibu Farouk. So uh, let's, let's go straight to the point because we are out of time already. Um, no need to tell the speaker that his presentation was awesome. Just straight to your question. All right, so Adekunde, let's have you. Adekunde Udutayo, let's have your question, please. Yeah, sorry. Uh, good evening. So I, I just want to quickly ask. So I am new to the design space, and I wanted to just understand a little bit what exactly would it take to be a Web three designer as someone newly coming into the space. Okay, um, thank you for that question. Yeah. So um, what what I tell people is designing in Web three or designing for Web three is still the same way you design in Web two. So um, it's still the same, you know, design principles. It's still the same tool um, we use. The only thing you just need to do or you need to know is to understand how Web3 works, is to understand, you know, products and protocols in Web3, how they work. So what I would advise you is, um, as a product designer that is already experienced, you know, designing Web2 products, right, just start um, using Web3 products, you know, bring yourself in as a user start with creating a crypto wallet right start by exploring other protocols because that's how you can you know use the product better it's just like for example if you want to design um, a fintech app the first thing you are going to do is to download a few uh, fintech app right to understand okay how does sending money works how does this works and how does that work so when you understand that that's when you cannot know if there's an issue in airflow and if you're designing your, your own product, how you can even make that better. So you just need to understand how um, Web3 works yeah, and most of the products. And that's all, um, that's all what you need. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. And also, um, get to, and also get to visit you know, all these websites. They are going to really help you. Okay, uh, thank you so much for your question. Uh, Taru Farouk, please let's have your question. Okay, good evening, everyone. <laughs> and good evening to Mr. Kroede. I'm very, very happy to um, have a conversation with you tonight. Okay, my question is that um, people always talk about uh, Web3 being very, very heavy, like Web3 is still heavy, Web3 is still heavy. So I want to know, like, Web3, the design, Web3 design just started to get recognition, like when? Is it like last year or? Or per year because people always say web three is very very heavy. So I want to know like for how far has web three design has started. So that's my question basically. Okay, so um, design in web three, I, I think it, it got recognition. I think last year, right? Last year because um, you know I said something about you know when a new technology em emerge, um, is the dev you know that's they explore and they innovate and create the solution, right? Is when that technology start, uh, start getting, you know, um, attention or recognition, that's when they now start bringing in, you know, other professionals in the tech space, that's it, from product managers to designers to this and that, to now start, you know, improving or building products or making the product they've already built in that space better. So 
it was last year you know like i said in the presentation it was even 2020 mid 2020 that uh decentralized finance even started getting it ways you know blew up so so yes yeah, so i think it was last year that um everyone started getting crazy about oh designing for web three but you know it's been a thing um i think even in 2019 i think it's, or 2020 it's been a thing right but last year 2021 it became a very um huge space right. uh, thank you so much uh for that uh so we are going to be um taking a live selfie so uh let's this is time where we take live so so you can uh turn on your camera so uh, we can take a uh, live uh, selfie so um, yeah so let's just turn our cameras i know sometimes that might not be light you know this and that living you know living nigeria so we know how it is right so uh please let's turn our come turn on our cameras in the next uh one minute let's take a live selfie Okay, I'm getting more people on here. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you guys, I see you guys, I see you guys. Turn on your camera, you can use your flashlight, don't worry, you understand. If you don't have flashlights, if just we understand. Well, don't worry, uh, on your camera, I'm no need to be shy that your house is not fine, or things like that, we understand. Uh, step by step <laughs> turn on your camera guys okay 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 live selfie okay more important on your cameras um okay let's do this say cheese cheese <laughs> okay uh one more time let's do another one you know this time around we are going to do a weird face or your goofy face or anything so let's do that so give me your goofy face all right um, so uh where can we find you um Akure, if you want to get reach out to you you might have further questions and all of that so uh, where can we find you yeah um on twitter um uh, at aj underscore mbc okay right yeah. so, uh, great so uh on this is Bexels. we have uh here messages every sunday and this is the last session for the year. So, I mean, uh, this is the last AME session for the year, right? We'll still be doing something subsequently in December, right? But it's going to be like where it's going to be an Ask AME session, which is Ask Minute session, right? Uh, so, we'll be having like all the stuff uh, towards the end of the year. So, you guys just watch out for it. And uh, on Wednesdays, we have Twitter spaces. So, you can just catch us on Twitter talking about topics in relation to design. So it's been a really, really insightful session. Thank you so much, Akuriti, for giving us insight into the Web3 space and how to create user experiences uh, for uh, products in the Web3 and blockchain space. So uh, it's been a very insightful session, and uh, I'm sure you guys uh, will agree with me. So guys, uh, enjoy yourself. Tomorrow is Monday. Uh, we have to prepare for stand-up and uh, get on with our day. All right, good night, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night. Mr. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone.